Hey, good afternoon folks, it's Damien here from Heroes of the Shire. Um, in our unboxing video I mentioned that we would um, go through and open these packs of cards in, a, in another video, so uh, here's that video I promised you. So um, let's start with the, uh, the Earth and Water one. Um, let me stop talking and we'll, we'll show you. I've already had a nosy through, through these, uh, obviously not these ones because they're, they're still wrapped in cellophane but the, the Earth and Water uh, edition of the game contains these cards and the Fire and Ice edition contains these cards and the Collector's edition uh, which are uh, you know, around about 80-90% of our backers um, are getting both. So uh, first card we've got here, Forgotten Forest, Trading Post, Treehouse, Base Camp, Wild Foraging and these, for those of you that aren't familiar, um, are our action cards uh, for the Earth scenario. So I think there's a total of 16 of these. Um, and these are like a little build your own adventure book. We just chose to do it via cards, um, just to give us a little bit more flexibility um, down the line with our expansions. So I mean, I'll just bring one up to the screen here for you. Um, this one's Mountain Pass. Um, at the top here, we've got their little description. So if I was playing the villain or, you know, like in D&D, &D, like the, the, the DM, the Dungeon Master, um, they'd read out the description and then we'd read out the options, option one, two or three. And the party heroes will select one of the options. Um, and we've got here, what have we got? As you journey through the Carrot Valley among the mountain pass, you begin to notice the wind picking up. The wind escalates and you seek refuge in a nearby depression. Do you remain there until the wind dies down or do you bravely face the strong winds? So we'd read out the options. Uh, let me go, let's go option three. We venture out of the depression and face the strong winds in the mountain pass. And then a villain player would then read out only outcome three, which is down here in the bottom. And outcome three, if we selected that option we've got here, you battle through the harsh winds to find a beaten up paladin at the bottom of the pass. If you have a heavy armoured hero in your party, you carry the paladin to safety, otherwise you leave him there. Add the paladin ally card to a hero's ability tab if you saved him, otherwise all allies receive plus one agility for three turns. So they're like the, uh, the little build your own adventure book that sort of that opens up a little bit of narrative and story as we go through these scenarios. Um, you know, some of them have got um, sub options here, so we can see we've got option one, option two. And then you've got option 1.1, 1 1.2, um, which obviously all relate to outcome one. Um, you know, some of them are, are two options, so option one, option two, outcome one, outcome two. And then some of them were the three options that we showed you a little bit earlier. So those are the uh, the action cards for the fire, uh, the earth scenario. And it looks like here we've got the action cards for the water scenario. So we've got pirates ahead. Trading Harbour, Wild Swimming, Quench, Spot of Fishing, Ghost Pirates, Travellers on the Road, Thunderstorm, Heavy Rain, Ancient Temple, Feeling Wheezy, Out at Sea, Rotten Bridge, and Wandering Feline, Rockpool, and Royal in Rest. Um, and then again, there's the backs of the water action cards. It looks like we're moving on to some boss ability cards. So we've got the baby goat cards for our Urphosaurus box. Uh, he is in the uh, in the Earth scenarios, the second boss. And then on the back, we've got the uh, the warrior goats, which are actually um, once you have three baby goats in play, the boss can actually evolve them, um, and he would take three of these baby goat cards. Sorry, I'm on the wrong side. We take three of these, remove two from play, and flip one card over to so make uh, a mighty warrior goat. And we uh, we put this card in full art, uh, so we could get a little bit of response from you guys if, if full art or borders is something we we uh, whichever path we follow forward. Because we always have this debate um, of whether or not going frames like the bronze frames and the gold frames with the trash mobs, which we'll come to shortly or if we went full art for the elites. Um, and it, it was around about 50-50, so we chose to go with the frames still. Um, but we still do love the full art. 
uh, yeah, really nice. So that's the uh, the Urphosaurus um, ability cards. Then we've got the uh, the cannon cards, which are boss ability cards for the for the water behemoth, which again is the second boss, but not for the Earth scenario. This is for the water scenario, and we know that they're for that boss because it shows him on the back there. Um, okay, and it also. little code down there in the bottom so BAB stands for boss ability and then we've got the CNN short for cannon and this is card one of five just to help uh, these codes are actually more than anything to help us uh, quickly identify cards should you guys get any damaged cards or missing cards all those sorts of things um, then we've got the uh, next boss ability card so you might be able to guess this is for the armored crab so we've got the, uh, the little baby crabs We now have got the, uh, the boss modification cards. So these are for the Earth scenario. We've got the, uh, the forest troll, the final boss. Uh, we've got the second boss here, the Earthosaurus. And then we've got the first boss, the Acidic Hydra. And on the back, we have the, the water scenario. Um, I have, since seeing these cards, um, moved the artwork over to the left-hand side because it seems that most of the cards all have the artwork on the left just to keep a little bit of sort of uniformity because uh, it was bugging me that he was over there. Uh, so I've changed that already. I think that was about a week or two ago. Uh, it looks like now we're moving on to the, uh, the event cards. So what these event cards do is they add a little bit of um, global, a little bit like the out in the arena mode, which you only get these in the battle pack. The, the battle maps add things into the arena. So these do something similar, but these add global effects to, let's have a look at this one here. If I can get the camera to focus. Dense forests. So all attacks have got a 33% chance of being evaded because thematically we're battling inside a dense forest. And then on round one, all heroes become rooted to the ground and their agility values read a zero for that round. Rain two, the dense forest cast a veil of darkness, obscuring the vision of everybody present. There's a fifty percent chance this time, uh, instead of thirty three percent of, of attacks missing. So uh, CD values of four, uh, and in this description up here it tells you five and six. So if you roll a four, five, or six, the attack misses that round, and it tells you a little bit more in the text there. We won't go into it, but um, uh, you do get to cast another spell. You basically just dropping cooldown dice on those spells that do get missed. Uh, rain four, so nothing happens in rain three. Rain four, the forest comes alive and all the heroes become frightened and wounded for two turns. Rain five, summon two forest elementals to the boss's ability tab. Uh, they drop no loot items when they die. And then in rain seven, the party of heroes find a healing well, uh, wellspring amongst the trees. All heroes gain 10 HP. So that's the... Uh the uh, the event card for the forest uh yeah the earth scenario and there's the event card for the water scenario and how do you encounter these so if we go back to um, the action cards which one is it here is one in here we've got thunderstorm and thunderstorm there in the description uh it says black clouds and encapsulates encapsulate the skies it starts to rumble Electrical charges accumulate at the base of the clouds, and it's only a matter of time until the lightning is discharged. Use the event card, or so should I say, use the thunderstorm event card um, during your next boss battle. Okay, so some of these cards will instruct you to add these to the next boss battles. Looks like we're now moving on to the hero ability cards. So we've got two for the uh, blood mage, two of his blood demon pets. Then we've got uh, one for the Dragon Knight. This is a little pet that we added as a stretch goal. We've then got the three Druid animal forms. And then we've got the Druid bear pet, which those of you familiar with the game, um, the artwork is the same. So we recycled that from the Huntress's bear, but this bear, they, it does have different moves and different stats. So uh, don't see the artwork and think it's the exact same bear. And you'll know this one's for the Druid, because it's got the Druid on the back of the card. And then we've got the uh, the Engineer's Gadgets, 
the Dragon Mech, the Electricity Turret, or the Electricity Field, should I say. Yes, I'm looking, I'm not even looking at the cards, I'm looking at the, <laughs> the screen here. Um, hence why I'm getting a little bit bamboozled. <laughs> a spell cast by the, by the Bard. Mind Control Helm, Regen Turret, and the Rocket Launcher. We've then got the Scholar Book. Uh, if you remember our most recent Kickstarter update, we updated the artwork on these. Uh, I didn't like the black too much here on the outside. So the black has pretty much disappeared now. And uh, the background, so you can see that this is one of the light pages. Uh, and there's a little bit of yellow lit up around the outside here. And we can see that there's a little bit of red here for the fire pages. Well, I've got rid of the black and I've basically made all the background red on the fire pages make them easily identifiable. <clears throat> you might have seen a video that we made uh, about a year ago when we did the deep dive. <coughs> Excuse me. So these cards will get laid down. We've got six, we then got four, we then got two, and then we've got the top one. And this field forms a little bit of a book on the side of the ability tab of the, uh, of the scholar. And then he opens up the pages to one of his elemental types. So he's got light at the back. He's got water, the blue pages in the middle. He's got five pages. And then this is, this is the little study book. Um, if any of you guys are cool enough to actually uh, stitch that together, I'd love to see that. That would be, that would be quite something. I might have to try that myself, actually. Uh, we've then got the Shaman's Totems, so these are unlockable in her spell mastery, she doesn't start with these two. They're Wind and Healing, yeah, they're both really powerful in different situations. Gives her Confuse, which is a really good cry control, and Gus gives her a little bit of extra damage. And then we've got Alleviate, which is a quite an unusual spell, um, because it deals a lot of damage, but it also gives the enemy HP regen. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's just there as a, as a little bit of, fin of a finisher to help the, uh, the Shaman get some damage through. And if she can't kill the enemy, hopefully, um, the allies can. We've got the, the stances here with the warrior. Brawl, defense, and support. And again, we know it's the warrior. We've got it on the back there. We've got the little code in the bottom left there. Hero ability card, HAB stands for. And then you've got the WRR, so it's, it's the warrior. One of three. Uh, we've got the Zombie Cat, Witch Doctor, Hero Ability card. Then we're moving on to Trash Mobs. So then we've got, you remember me, we've got the, the four of each mob. So we've got three Bronze. Um, they've got different stats. Some of the spells are ever so slightly different. So if we can see here, the, sorry, I'm struggling to, there we go. So we can see uh, the Jungle Cover. So you can see one does two HP, one does two HP, and one's one HP. The same for the overpower. Some of the stats are a little bit different. If we look at these two, um, this one on the left's got a defense of five. This one on the right has got a defense of seven. This one's got 20 HP. Um, and then we've got the elite one in here. And then the same for the Goblin Shamans. We've got the elite at the back. We've got the fighter snails. This is... One of my favourite artworks. It's really, really cool, quite unusual. We've got the three standard, then we've got the gold, and then we've got the three standard, and then we've got the gold. And then we're on to the water. So we've got the wild alligators, and then we've got the gold, the water monkey, bronze frame, standard, and then we've got the, uh, we've got the gold. So one thing to notice as well is that all the elite monsters um, have uh, an individual name. So this one's called Liquid. Um, and that's because some of them are used for uh, some of our quests. So we've got the Coastal Terrapins. And then we've got Snapper, which is the name of the, uh, of the elite in the water. So that is the pack uh, from the Earth in the Water scenario. And let's jump into, it's very much the same, but with the different theme scenarios. Where's my little, here we are. So we'll blast through this one a little bit faster, because you, you kind of know what to expect now. Right, we've got the, uh, 
We've got all the action cards here for the fire scenario. And then we've got all the action cards here for the uh, for the ice scenario. So if you remember me saying in the, in the unboxing video, if some of you watched that, um, that one of the concerns that we had, and not just us, uh, you know, it's about only about two or three men people mentioned it uh, when we were at the, the, at the UK Games Expo that some of the text looks a little bit small. Um, but bearing in mind that we were, our prototypes that we were using in the expo were just ones that we printed off at home, off our home printer, because our prototypes that we got from China, we just financially couldn't keep, a, we couldn't afford every time we updated the game to get them printed from China. So our, our prototypes that we were using were about two years old. So um, like the, uh, how readable the text was when it being quite small. Um, and then you can see here, I mean, look how sharp that is. Um, you know, we were playing Jaws of the Lion the other day and the text in there is smaller. Um, and some other games that we've got, we've noticed the text is smaller. So this is it's a reasonable size. Um, and our manufacturer done a great job. The, the print in this is absolutely fantastic. It's really sharp. Um, it does exactly what we wanted, um, especially on the, on the small text as well. So there were the uh, those are the ice cards. Um, popping those down. We're then moving on to the boss ability cards. So we've got the, uh, the six little dragon hatchlings. Um, so these eggs flip over one at a time, spawning the dragon hatchlings. The, the dragon boss does have a spell to summon all six in one go, which is uh, which is quite snazzy because she gets defense and strength for each one that's alive. So at the beginning of her turn, if she hatches six, she now gets plus six defense and plus six strength. And if you have a look at her frenzy spell, she can go quite crazy. We've got these uh, little baby elementals. The artwork always reminded me of Groot. Is it Groot, the, the little guy from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? I mean, he's not quite as cute, but he's, he's the closest thing I'd seen to a Groot in a while, a little fire version. Um, and therefore our fire elemental boss. Then we've got the the Alpine Forest cards. So, card instructs you to add it to an ability tab and at the beginning of your hero upkeep, you get the choice to stay in the forest or to leave the forest. Um, if you leave the forest, you'll flip the card face down this way. Um, and it basically just means that you don't have the protection of the forest anymore. Um, and when you're protected by the forest, you can see these two lines here at the bottom. You can't be the target of enemy spells, but you can't cast any attack spells. So to kill the boss, you do eventually have to leave the protection of the trees, flipping the card to this side, uh, which basically means that he can now target you. And if you have a look at the, uh, the Ice Giant's um, stats, they're pretty intense. He's got 11 strength and 11 defense so he hits really hard so you don't want to expose yourself too much otherwise uh, two or three hits and you'll die we've got the spider hatchlings there for the white widow boss and we've got the uh, boss modification card so we've got the fire and then we've got the ice event cards so we've got the blizzard and the rock slide we've got the alchemist potions fire I say fire, yeah, yeah, it's fire, fortune, growth, potion, uh, light, nightfall, and protection. And we've got them on the back. The artwork here. Then yeah, we've got the Huntress's Bear now. So it's, again, like I mentioned earlier with the Druid, it's slightly different stats and, and different spells. We've got the bird and the snake. They're the main three that she can summon on her hero ability. And then she's got the board that she can unlock in a... Oh, I forget the name of the tree. Is it Animal Compat now? Um, oh, I forget the name of the spell mastery on the right hand side. She's got Arrow Specialist. She's got Swordsmanship. Um, oh, I can't for the life of me remember. It'll come back to me in a moment as soon as I've finished the video. Uh, then we've got the Wolf Pets. We've got the Mercenary, which is the War Drummer's little companion, which he can summon if you go down the uh, down the middle DPS path. We've got the Warlock Pets. These are me, the Dead's really strong. Don't let the Warlock summon too many of them. And then we're moving on to the Trash Mobs. So we've got the Fire Trash Mobs here, 
four of each card. We've got the elites at the back in the gold frames. And then we've got the the ice cards, the ice mob, mob should I say. Um, this is one of my favourite artworks as well, the Abominable Snowman. Um, at one point in the in the design when we received this artwork, I was really tempted to actually change one of the bosses and turn this guy into a boss and put the boss artwork as a trash mob. Um, but we never we never did in the end. Here's the Frost Serpent. So these this is the one of the stretch goal cards. Got a cool ability here called Aftermath. When your HP reaches one or lower, you're not defeated. Instead, you immediately take a bonus turn, which during which you deal 100% more damage. And after the bonus turn, you're defeated and all allies gain four HP. Hits reasonably hard as well. Strength and intellect to five and six, so that's 11. Plus the two, that's 13 damage plus poison every round. Um, and then when he dies, he deals double damage and gets a bonus turn. So yeah, he's, these, these guys are pretty strong. Um, and that pretty much concludes us guys for the for the cards for the for the fire and ice and the earth scenario. Yeah, if we pop them all together, give you a rough idea. There's not how many cards we've got there. I can't quite remember. There's about 110, 120 in each half. So there's about 240 cards there. Um, and then don't forget, we've also got the other hundred and something odd cards, um, which were generic, and there we already showed those in the um, in the other video, I believe, the unboxing video, which was some of the ally cards and the quest cards, uh, because they come in each version of the game, um, and they're not specific. So yeah, we'll leave you with that. That was just a really quick, brief look at, at some of those some of those cards. There, we're really impressed with the quality. Um, during the, one of the stretch goals, we upgraded to linen. Little linen finish. I don't know if my camera here. I'm just using my phone. Will show it. Yeah, you can just about see the little the linen. Those little lines, um, like little cross stitching lines running across the card surface. There it just makes it feel a little bit nicer when it's in your hand and not so slippy and so glossy. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Have a have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, 